went to a party on Star Island in Miami uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. And I went to use a bathroom and it was um, on the bathroom sink. I also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to essentially represent them in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. Is Jay-Z finally cracking under the pressure? Rumors are swirling that Cameron's recent moves have led the feds directly to Jay-Z's door. It's no secret that Cameron has been exposing Jay-Z for years, but now, things have taken a dangerous turn. Why did Jay-Z allegedly threaten Cameron? And what exactly was found when the feds came knocking? He said, we are not done, and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. Plus, there are leaked tapes that suggest things could get much worse for Jay-Z. And Diddy's arrest might just be the tip of the iceberg. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Cameron's had a lot to say about Diddy in the past, but it seems his biggest target is now Jay-Z himself. Did Jay-Z cross the line by threatening Cameron to keep quiet? It's no secret that Cameron and Jay-Z have had their fair share of beef over the years. The two MCs and label mates were once cordial. However, before long, a rift began to appear between the label mates and grew ever wider. Like I said, I'm not beef on him. I just said it was on my mom again, but I haven't spoken to him. And that's part of the reason we was on this label for four years and we never communicated. The two first met in the 1990s, and having just formed his Rockefeller record label, Jay-Z and Cameron quickly began doing business together. Although their partnership seemed splendid initially, Jay-Z shortly began hearing subliminal disses toward him in Cameron's music. In 2000, Dame Dash announced Cameron, real name Cameron Giles, would take on the role of vice president for Rockefeller. However, Dash made this decision while Jay-Z was on holiday. Carter understandably disapproved of the arrangement. The contract never got drafted. In 2001, Jay-Z would become the epicenter of an epic rap beef involving Mob Deep and Nas, culminating with the legendary Nas track Ether. Nas also addressed Cameron on the song, prompting the Harlem rapper to join the war. Giles replied with Show You How, a freestyle over Jay-Z's song of the same name. In 2006, upon realizing that Jay-Z had refused him the vice president role, Giles released You Got To Love It, a diss track directed at Jay-Z. In the song, he suggested Hav nefariously blocked him from becoming the VP of Rockefeller. However, with no response from Hav, things began to subside. In a 2022 interview with the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast, Giles shockingly and openly revealed that as a result of Jay-Z's VP move, he retaliated by tweaking his music to smear and exclude Hav. Speaking on his decisions, Giles revealed, Hav did a remix for Oh Boy, and I erased it. Looking back on it, I should have saved it because, ish, I could have got some money. However, he justified it, unveiling how Jay-Z wiped all of Giles' contributions from the paid in full soundtrack. I was just so caught up, he admitted. I'm very, very petty, man. But looking back on that, you made a great point. We should have kept it. And whether we used it or not, we should have had it. In 2019, Jay-Z, Nas, and Cameron all quashed their past issues publicly and as a trio performed at New York City's Terminal 5 to put on an unforgettable show for fans. Recalling how the billionaire rapper invited him to perform, Giles stated, Jay called, he's like, yo, first of all, I want to tell you I got respect for you. And I'm like, same here, bro. He said, ish ain't no big thing, man. We are talking about some ish, effing 12, 13 years old. I'm straight. We just showed our love for each other and we kept it under wraps, Cameron explained, and said he loved seeing the audience's shock when he came on stage. Nobody would have thought that in a million years. However, it seems that all is still not well in paradise. Cameron's accusations have now escalated to a whole new level, with rumors flying that his latest revelation about Jay-Z has involved the feds. Fans are asking, did Cameron tip off federal agents about something incriminating at Jay-Z's house? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about the tapes. Just days after Diddy's arrest, tapes began circulating that allegedly linked Jay-Z to shady dealings at secret parties. And guess who's being accused of leaking these tapes? That's right, Cameron. While speaking in an interview, Cam revealed that he attended a party on Star Island in Miami, where Diddy resides. To a party on Star Island in Miami, uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. The rapper went on to speak about how he took a bunch of ecstasy since he saw everyone taking it. I 
took a whole bunch of ecstasy. Afterward, Cam allegedly started looking for the bathroom. I'm on ecstasy and I'm trying to find the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I can't find the bathroom and I just kind of like go down a flight of stairs and now I'm in like the inner windings of the mansion because yeah. most of it's going down by the pool. The rapper also talked about how the house was some sort of a maze, making it hard for an intoxicated person to find his way out. So I get lost and I'm in like just a maze of rooms. Yeah. Now I'm looking for the bathroom. Things then took a weird twist when Cam came across a room where all the creepy stuff was taking place. Open a door and in that room there are a bunch of men mm -hmm. and they're all kind of like very like Romanesque. Cameron explained that he felt as though he had interrupted something. Anyway, things got creepier when Diddy spotted Cameron. The minute I make eye contact with him, like a gigantic bouncer comes over and says, because a lot of people turned and looked at me because it was very unexpected. That Cameron was clearly traumatized by what he saw. He even said that he knew for sure that Diddy was high and that he was actually gay. The rapper then revealed that Diddy never forgot his face. In fact, during one of Diddy's interviews, he noticed Cam in the background. He literally stops the interview and he points at me all the way in the back and he goes, yo, you, my man. What's more, Cameron revealed that Diddy later on invited him out to lunch. Yeah, man, uh but I invited me there before I had lunch with him. Anyway, this is not the first time Cameron has spoken about the weird things that happen in Diddy's household. Cameron has also spoken about how he once found a toy at Diddy's place. That's right, Cameron made a shocking revelation on the Breakfast Club radio show saying he found a toy in Diddy's bathroom. And I went to use a bathroom and it was a dildo um, on the bathroom sink. In addition to this, a resurfaced video of Diddy showing his son how to mix up drinks has raised some eyebrows. Uh, but this is the way we drink our deli on tequila. Frosty, we get ice cold, we go and put it in. I don't know about you, but that video feels like Diddy is trying to show Justin how to mix up drinks and slip something in them. What's more, in a separate video, Diddy is seen drinking one of those drinks then reacting in a crazy manner. One would almost think that his drink had something else in it. Another person who has spoken about what goes down at Diddy's creepy parties is Diddy's ex-bodyguard. Gene Deal has been spilling some seriously scandalous tea about what went down behind the scenes and at Diddy's wild parties. And let's just say it's not for the faint of heart. According to Gene, there were certain areas that Diddy would frequent and his bodyguards were not allowed in. But that didn't stop the ladies who were invited from dishing all the juicy details to Gene. Apparently, he was privy to some pretty disturbing things that went on at these secret soirees which involved some seriously sadistic and demonic behavior. Although he wasn't allowed into these private rooms, Gene still managed to get the inside scoop on what went on behind closed doors. He said that he was in a situation where he saw men being set up and lured by women at Diddy's parties, only for them to eventually end up in inappropriate positions with white men. He claimed that he also used to take Diddy and his friends to Turkish houses, and as much as he wasn't allowed into the houses, he knew what happened there. Uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a quite a few of them down. I'm like, yeah, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said plugs. And I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> What's more, an insider at Combs's parties in Spanish Island Ibiza spoke to the son about what they witnessed. No expense was spared, the source shared. This was the last word in hedonism. We were approached by one of his PAs, Dia, and did everything for them from the moment they touched down on the island. That included cars, tables at clubs, yachts, security, and DJs, and some guests for his parties. There were a lot of glamorous women there, young girls, but not underage, which we wouldn't have stood for. The insider added that one party had partygoers in various states of undress, and part of their responsibility was for the party to run smoothly. Ibiza is the place in Europe to party hard, the source added, noting that Diddy had a bag he packed for the trip. The bag included and loop but Diddy's parties were truly something else, they continued. I remember one time being sent out in the early hours to buy chocolate body paint. Diddy had a drink of choice, of course. He liked Ciroc vodka. He was very particular about his drinks, the source continued. He was always dressed immaculately, too. The insider added that Combs' long-term girlfriend, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, was often present for the parties in Ibiza, but she looked unhappy and stayed out of sight. In any case, Cameron's stories about Diddy have always hinted that Jay-Z might be more involved than we think. And while Jay-Z has managed to stay out of the spotlight during the Diddy investigations, fans are wondering how long he can keep that up. Cameron's revelations might just change that.
The feds have been relentless in their investigation of Diddy's criminal dealings, and now, according to multiple sources, they might be looking closely at Jay-Z's connections too. With tapes being leaked and Cameron throwing shade, fans are starting to wonder if Jay-Z's house is next on the list for a federal raid. Could it be that Cameron's latest moves have led the feds straight to Jay-Z's front door? Some believe Cameron's been feeding information to federal agents for months, and now, Jay-Z might be feeling the heat. In any case, rumors have been swirling for months about the rocky dynamic between Jay-Z and Diddy. Once seen as music's power duo, their relationship has reportedly soured, with recent allegations suggesting Diddy's infamous freak-off parties could be the reason. And now there's talk that Beyoncé herself might be involved. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, the details are murky. What we do know is that Jay-Z isn't happy. Sources close to the situation say that Jay has been in damage control mode, calling high-powered lawyers and media handlers to figure out how to handle the potential fallout from the supposed footage. But it doesn't stop there. Jay-Z has apparently also been distancing himself from Diddy in public, perhaps as a way to protect both his image and Beyonce's. And let's not forget, these two aren't just friends. They have history. Jay-Z and Diddy have collaborated on projects, shared mutual connections, and attended the same exclusive parties. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. Yeah. You know, the game has been elevated. But could Diddy's downfall spell trouble for Jay-Z as well? Diddy's recent arrest has blown the lid off of an underworld that many believed was just a myth. Parties that allegedly involved some of the biggest names in the industry. From freak-off tapes to blackmail threats, it's no wonder Jay-Z is scrambling to keep his distance. Some reports even suggest that Jay-Z's legal team is preparing for the worst. You see, Diddy's freak-off parties have long been a source of controversy with whispers about what went on behind closed doors growing louder and louder. Now, with his recent arrest, it seems like the truth is finally coming to light. And what's more, there are tapes. Real incriminating footage that could expose not just Diddy, but everyone involved. Combs allegedly planned and controlled performances, which he called freak-offs. And he often electronically recorded them. It's rumored that Jay-Z and Beyonce are among the names that could be linked to these parties. And if any of that footage leaks, it would be a PR nightmare for the Carters. But Jay-Z isn't waiting around for that to happen. He's reportedly taken aggressive legal steps to ensure that any footage involving him and Beyonce stays buried for good. As of now, the future of Jay-Z and Beyonce remains uncertain. While the leaked footage has yet to surface, the rumors alone are enough to send shockwaves through the entertainment world. So will Jay-Z Z's brutal response be enough to protect their empire, or are we witnessing the beginning of a very public unraveling? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the Carters are fighting to keep their throne intact. Anyway, that's it for this video folks, bye.